So hello, everybody, and welcome to Hashtag Open Ed. This is our um, ongoing series now. For Masturbation May, we are focusing on all sorts of um, self-love topics. And tonight, Sarah and I are really excited about um, bringing you some sex toy uh, information. Um, but before we jump into that, of course, I always want to tell you guys more about who we are at Hashtag Open. So we are a dating app that really lets you choose how you want to date. So we give you a ton of different ways to identify yourself from the way you um, want to put your gender orientation, your relationship style. We're going to give you all the options out there um, with 24 gender identities and 23 orientations. So you really have a ton to choose from. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can actually write your um what you're looking for right in there. You can also use hashtags on your profile to communicate what you're looking for in a partner, in a friend, um, in an experience for dating. And then you can use those hashtags to search for other people who are looking for similar things. Um, and then if you're somebody who dates a partnered, um, if you're a poly, if you're ethically non-monogamous, you can have both a solo or a partner profile, or you can have both. So we're really trying to um, change the dating game and make dating the um, really customizable for what experience you want to date. So we hope you'll check us out at hashtag open.com. We're available for Android and iOS. Uh, I actually, yeah, I was going to say, I actually connected with another hedgehog owner this week on hashtag open and we have been sharing hedgehog pictures and Insta. So um, when you literally, you can find any kind of connection you want on hashtag open. I love that so much. Uh, it was just, <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, it's like, Oh, it's a, you go on a dating app and you find other hedgehog owners. I'm like, why not? You know, like I already know that there are people I'm going to get along with. You know? <laughs> um, so um, as some of y'all might be aware, it is masturbation May. And um, we of course uh, celebrate all things uh, sex positive and pleasure positive at hashtag open. And so We've had some really, like, we've got some really great workshops lined up for this month, but we kind of realized that, like, you know, there's, we haven't done a, there's nobody that was doing a Sex Toys 101 class. And so we wanted to take a chance just to kind of throw out some um, basics about sex toys, because we know, like, there are tons of people who are out there who are a little nervous about it or haven't tried them yet. Or um, maybe they're veterans and they're trying to figure out, like, what do I want to, uh, to explore next? Um, and so we wanted to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of the world of sex toys so that you can um, know a little bit more about them and maybe find yourself a little bit of pleasure with them. Um, so I, I think that this is actually kind of a really interesting time to be exploring our sexuality in general. Um, we were kind of prevented from our normal day to day for most of us, at least um, like we, we may not be out seeing our, our friends. We may, may not be able to go on physical person to person dates. Um, we might be at a home with a roommate or with a family member where we're trying to figure out ways to get our own pleasure without necessarily like cluing anybody else in the house in on what we're doing. So we're all kind of in this really interesting place where, um, we have an opportunity to kind of lean into that and think about like, what is it that would actually make me really happy? And I think that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, dating app, particularly apps like hashtag open is it's such a great time to be engaged because it does give you a chance to kind of like, go like what might my life be like if I integrated this or if I tried something new? Um, so, we think that now is a great time to explore your sexuality on a more hands-on level. Um, we had Elle last week. Elle Chase did a great workshop on mutual masturbation, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Um, but one of the things that Elle talked about was that, you know, we, we really do kind of start basically masturbating and kind of keep doing that the same way that we've always done it. And we know that when it comes to our bodies, like our bodies are changing all the time. And assuming that like the way that we figured out how to do something when we were a teenager or when, when we were in our early twenties, like that's not going to be the way that things are even the best. You know, it's like what I settled for in terms of relationships when I was, when I was in my late teens and early twenties, it's like now I know better. And so I'm able to advocate more for myself. So, um, so like now is absolutely an amazing time to explore. Um, 
I think that it's also a cool time to kind of lean into some of the other kind of social good things. Um, we at Hashtag Open have worked with a lot of um, local um, locally owned small businesses that are, um, in many cases, women and trans owned. Um, they're companies that give back to their communities that they're in. And so um, by using some of your funds to shop with them, you're actually not just getting something great for yourself, but you're also like helping keep our small businesses alive. So, um, you know, so this is, I think, a great time. Miley, do you have any other, like, why do you think this is a good time? Absolutely. I think one, just supporting our, our friends at the local sex shops. We, um, we have a blog post up that Hannah can probably link to that kind of overview some of our favorite places to shop from. That's really important to us here. And um, we'll definitely share. Um, I have some that we've bought lo- from those shops and um, we'll definitely point that out as we're showing some of our toys later. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, as we're home, you know, it, we've talked about on our team that sex and mental health, um, there's a big, there's a huge connection and with people being at home right now and things are stressful. And, Mm -hmm. um, we really, I know I view, uh, masturbation as a form of self care. And so exploring different ways to, um, take care of yourself through, through pleasure right now is really important when, when things are extra stressful and, and uncertain. So, um, you know, so it, we, we also know some people have a lower sex drive, but for those people who are, are looking to kind of de-stress with sex, um, self-pleasure is a great way to do that. I think it's also, um, you know, sex toys, they're, I mean, they're called sex toys, but a lot of these toys can be used for sensual pleasure as well. Um, you know, I kind of laugh because my Hitachi or my, my magic wand is literally right next to my my chair and it's not because I'm you know in my office having fun with it but it's because it just feels really good as somebody who's living by myself to be able to like work work with my back and and relax a little bit um, it can it can really kind of help ease some of that skin touch hunger um, but it also can be about just letting your body feel pleasure it doesn't have to be about sex it doesn't have to be about an orgasm but pleasure in general, can be a really great way for us to kind of like self-soothe and and take care of ourselves Mm -hmm. during this. So even if your libido has kind of dropped a little bit, um, like that is no reason to hold back from experiencing pleasure that feels good for you. Um, So, and pretty much every toy that we're going to be talking about tonight can be used lots and lots of different ways. So um, most of the toys that we're going to be showing you can be used solo or partnered. Um, some of them are in fact really great for long distance play. Um, so if you have a remote COVID cutie, um, like <clears throat> one of our team members does, uh, you know, like, <laughs> do you like how I did that? Mark? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, of course not. Um, <laughs> but I think I, so let's start out with like, what kinds of toys are out there? So, so Miley, what do you think is like a classic thing that people think of when they think sex toy? I think one thing that always comes to mind is just a classic dildo, Mm -hmm. just your straight. So I have a couple different of my favorite ones here. Um, I always have this big skin. I like, I, you'll notice Sarah and I talked about this. My um, toy collection is like bright and colorful. I'm like a nineties Lisa Frank baby (laughs) who's just like everything's neon and like, um, (laughs) so um, I have, this is the big skin or uh, Maverick in tie dye, rainbow tie dye. Mm -hmm. Um, So you know, there's a bunch of different uh, materials. Uh, I'm sure Sarah can tell you more about um, what she recommends, but I like this one. This is a dual density, so it's a little bit squishy, mm. but it's also firm. Um, I will say one thing about some of these. These ones, like, attract. I keep it in the plastic because these ones attract, like, every piece of fuzz and dust oh, yeah. um, in the environment. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, like, you have to wash it right before you use it and right after, and it's, uh, but... Yep, so that's like, you know, that's one of my favorites for a class. Don't put that um, one away yet. Don't, yeah, I want to show, so um, you, you, when you go to the store, you'll see lots and lots of different kinds of dongs, Um, and like, I build those dongs, whatever, Um, but one thing to keep in mind is what the base of it looks like, and I find that a lot of the better designed toys um, have a nice substantial base, and what that base does is a couple of things. One is, that means that that toy is safe for both anal and vaginal penetration, 
um, because it has enough of a flange that it's not going to go all the way into your butt requiring an ER trip, and nobody wants that right now. Um, the other thing is if you're curious about exploring pegging with a partner, um, that, that toy will fit into uh, a traditional strap-on harness. And strap-on harnesses aren't just for folks with vulvas. They are great for folks with penises. There's lots and lots of reasons to use a strap-on beyond just like, oh, you know, like I want to peg my partner. Um, but when you're looking at dildos in particular, like look for those features because that nice substantial base actually is a feature. It's not something that's just kind of an afterthought on there. Right. That one, um, that's actually from, this is from Pleasure Chest um, in New York City. That one was a, on a hashtag open field trip, actually, when we went to Bobby. <laughs> um, we put that, put that I love it. We go to sex toy stores, um, stores on, on field trips. Yes. <laughs> um, and then a couple other dildos that I have to show. Um, this is my absolute favorite one. This one is called the Polka Dot Gillette oh by Lutzart. Um really tight the, she's a small little company it's like an independent it's just like a one woman shop um she makes a lot of fun different designs um one thing i love about that shop in particular is she actually has an extender that fits in the base of this you can put a bullet um, vibrator in there mm -hmm. um but she actually has the designer of this actually um also ex has an extender that's um flexible for people who are um have some different disabilities or have um some mobility mm -hmm. issues um so i love that she has um you know accessible toys for um differently abled people um that's something that i love and is uh unique about the the gillette and it's just fun to look at that one's a, that's a fun one. so my contribution to the dildo section is actually a double dildo a double-sided so like um i'm sure most people have seen like the really porny like long like 24 inch long ones that look like you could beat somebody with them. Um, a fun fact, when I managed pleasure chest here in town, uh, we had two of them that lit up with black light that fluoresced. Um, and so we, we actually like after hours one night, we had like a sword fight with, with two black light lit dildos because it was flares. Anyhow, um, the problem with those is that they're, they're kind of not really functional. Um, to wear and to use with a partner. And a lot of people want to experience that. They want to experience like, hey, I want my partner to get penetrated and I want to feel something inside as well. Um, and so this is the share. Um, they've got a couple of different versions of this one. I actually have two of them. Um, but this one is actually meant to be worn inside the vagina. Um, and then it actually, like, it's, it's super flexible. So regardless of how your body is put together and how your partner's body is put together, you get a lot of, a lot of ability to use this. Um, and then you've got kind of a traditional dildo shape for the rest of it. Um, you can get double-ended dildos in lots of places, but what I would say is make sure that, um, you know, like, think about how your bodies might fit together and whether it's going to work. The other thing that I really like with this as somebody who occasionally has some mobility issues is that if I want to use this to play with my partner, I can actually hold on to this part and use it to thrust. Um, so like this can be a really comfortable way for me to, if my, if my hips and my lower back aren't playing well for me to be able to use my hands to, to keep the action going. Um, so that's my contribution to the dildo section. Um, yeah. I love that you always have those like expert level, <laughs> like, uh, you know, you can always try this with this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, you know what? I think, I think the cool thing is like, um, when things open up, go to your local sex positive shop until then feel free to like email them and ask them like real legitimate questions. Like what are some other ways I can use this? A great tip that I got, um, another kind of sex toy that we're going to actually talk about is cock rings. Um, do you still have a, did you grab that vibrating cock ring, Marley? Awesome. Would yes, you show I that did. off? Sure. I did. Yeah. So, so this is um, the We Vibe, and I honestly, it's terrible. I didn't look up the name of this one. Um, but that's on the We Vibe product line, and it is Bluetooth enabled, this one. So... Yeah, it's, it's a nice one. It's Bluetooth enabled too, because you're not like reaching down and kind of going like, "Oh, I gotta, I gotta adjust the cock ring." Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so with it's this one is not very stretchy, though. I will tell you the that the stretchier so. ones. That's something to keep in um, mind. You can actually slide a couple of fingers into that into that ring, 
um, and use yeah. it like a hand vibe to to like stroke your partner, to stroke yourself. Um, yeah. So it, just because it's a cock ring doesn't mean it needs to stay on a cock. Um, they're also great. Oh, Sunny's awesome. This is the verse. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you, Sunny. Um, yeah, it is like they're, a vibrating cock ring is essentially like a vibrator with a loop on it. And so like you can totally use that. Um, a non-vibrating cock ring is something like this. This one actually snaps. Um, so it's adjustable for different sizes. Um, a lot of times people will be like, oh, my gosh, this is a really big ring. And it's like, okay, so let's talk for a second about why people use cock rings. Um, Cock rings actually compress the vessels that that make blood flow back out of the penis, which is the, the, the surface level vessels, um, but they don't compress the veins that go in. So what it does is it actually holds um, blood in the penis for a little bit longer. Um, and so it makes penises a little bit more sensitive. It can make erections a little bit stronger for people who occasionally get like, um, you know, like not everything stays totally hard for as long as you want it because that's not how bodies work. Um, but if you want to add a little bit more stamina and staying power to it, um, the other thing that they can do is they can really kind of like make a great visual. Like you put a cock ring around everything and it kind of, it, it's like a wonder bra for your, for your bits. And it just kind of moves everything up front and it's like, Hey, I, you look, you know, so it's kind of, you know, like if you're going to do a picture of you in a jock strap for a dating app, hint, hint, that would be a great way to get a really good package look. Um, but if you're using if you're using a cock ring just for like for some sensation, you can put it at the base of the penis. If you're using it because you want to get the compression, you want to put it around the base of everything. So behind the balls um, at the very base so that you're compressing um, as well as you can. Um, the important thing with cock rings is to like not turn your brain off while you're using your bits. Um, if it starts feeling too tight, if you notice that like you're changing different colors or that like their skin is cool to the touch, please remove it because it's not meant to be used as like a long-term kind of a thing. Um, or if you want to wear it all day, make sure that it's loose enough that it's not going to totally restrict your blood flow. Um, but I think vibrating cock rings are kind of like great because particularly for a lot of het men, um, they never got the clue about like how awesome cock rings are for, for the wearer's pleasure. And so I think vibrating cock rings in particular can give, give folks an opportunity to like have a toy that's just for them as well as a toy that's for their partner. Um, and that's, that's kind of, that's a, a sexually radical way of, of thinking about sex is that both people, if you're having partnered sex, both or all people should be enjoying everything. Um, so sorry, we took a dive off to the side for cock rings. Um, but the cock rings actually can go on the base of a dildo as well to make your toy a vibrator. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're literally like an add a vibe attachment. Yeah. Yeah. You can easily, you know, put that. Oh, that, that, that is that, actually you know, kind of a attachment perfect itself. fit, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so what other toys do you have there that you want us to talk about, Miley? Um, I know we were going to show, I have some very old vi mm -hmm. uh, rabbit style, um, ones, which you can probably tell a little yeah. bit more about. These were like probably some of my like yeah. first vibrators I had to tell Sarah. We realized neither of us either had really, um, rabbit style vibrators that we use, but I think these are probably like, these were in the back of a drawer somewhere. That's um, <laughs> That they were probably like some of my first vibrators or something. And that's kind of like one of those iconic vibes, right? It's like the the rabbit vibe. It's like Sex in the City popularized it. It truly has like a little bunny on it, as you can see. <laughs> I don't know what the bunny is holding on to because it looks a little bit like Bunny's got got some some. Yeah, bunny's, bunny's very really happy to excited. be there. <laughs> or is bunny. that a carrot on your bunny, or are you? Yeah, or bunny's yeah. got a really yummy <laughs> carrot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that a carrot? A carrot on your vibe? Or no. Um, so, so a uh, a uh, uh, rabbit style vibrator is actually kind of um, it, it's a combination of two different toys. So, lots of vibrators that folks are kind of used to are like the the long cylindrical ones that um, back in the seventies and eighties you used to see the ads for them, and women would have them like laying on their face. And I'm just like, hmm, 
that's not actually how those are work and nobody ever uses it that way. Um, but we kind of started thinking about like external vibes and internal vibes. So the internal vibe is something that would be inserted and, and buzz and, and get you off. Um, and then an external vibe is something that's more uh, clitoral or surface sensation. So the rabid vibe kind of brings the two of those together. Um, it gives you an opportunity to have both internal and external stimulation, which for a lot of folks with vulvas is a great combination because it's um, actually mm -hmm. getting more oomph into all of the clitoris, the, the legs and the bulb, as well as the glands. Um, a really good, um, one thing I will say is like from a buyer's perspective, when you buy a rabbit vibe, think about whether you're going to want to necessarily have like vibration stronger in one area and not the other or even turned off. Um, some of the least expensive ones, basically they have a speed and the whole thing goes at that speed, but um, a little bit more um, advanced kind of a, a rabbit vibe will have like a different control for the rabbit part and for the internal part. So um, when you're buying that particular kind of vibe, look to see if it's got dual controls. Um, and there are some really great ones. Um, there are, I mean, I think rabbit vibes, there's like such a huge variety and so many of them are really, really good. Um, and from a price point perspective, like you can get a good rabbit vibe for under $50, no problem. Um, so. Yeah, and you know what's funny, Sarah? I just, I think this is actually a good example of why not to buy from somewhere like Amazon, like this one. Um, you can even see it, the plastic looks very shiny and cheap. Mm -hmm. It actually says mm. waterproof on here, which is hilarious because it's actually, this is an old battery powered one, but um, this yeah. doesn't actually close. And it says it's waterproof, yeah. you know, so um, things like that. Um, it's really hard to assess the quality of stuff like this on, yeah. on Amazon, uh, which is why we really love the, again, going back to the small sex shops. Um you know, we just, the, the, the ones that we really know mm -hmm. and trust, we know that the products that they're selling yeah. are going to be good, high quality products that, you know, if you have a problem with the companies are going to honor their, um, their policies and they'll replace the stuff um, versus, you know, these are coming from a factory and, you know, they're cheap, but yeah. you know, you don't know if their body's safe and um, you know, whether they actually function as said. Is, and it's, it's really you know, sad because I think know. part of the reason why we don't have more like, um, good quality conversations about sex toys is the inherent taboo and the inherent shame that we have about sex in general. And so when we, when we break down, like, and we don't, we don't focus on the taboo and we make it a safe space for people to be able to say like, Hey, I demand quality. Like, you know, like sex isn't a throwaway. Mm -hmm. Pleasure isn't a throwaway. And um, I think that, that, you know, going with companies who are actually going to bring that same value to their product, um, it really does make a difference. Um, you know, I, I got really fortunate working in the industry because I got to try some of the best stuff that was out there. Um, and, and I'll tell you that, like, not everybody is, you know, not, not every company does what it says it's going to do. Um, so we have a couple of, um, actually, one way of doing your research. Um, just as a side note, we're also going to be putting a um, blog piece out in the next couple of days that's going to have some of the reference uh, that we're using in this. But I'm going to copy and paste four review websites over that are favorites of ours. Um, and these are great places to check to see what other people think about the toys that you're looking at. Um, a lot of folks rely on online reviewers to kind of give them a real sense of like, was this a good value for the money? What did you think about this? So lean into the reviews that are out there. Um, the folks that, that I picked out are all people who are coming at it from different perspectives, but all of them from the perspective of um, that it's important to have quality and to know what you're getting. Um, so, so yeah, uh, do a little bit of research on them. Um, I think while we're talking about the rabbit, let's talk a little bit about internal vibes. Um, I have, I brought this one. Uh, this is one from Lilo. Um, and this is, uh, this is great for G-spot play. Um, you can also use it for prostate play, although strictly I wouldn't necessarily say that this is uh, anal safe because it's not a really big flange, but for some folks, this is totally fine. Um, the cool thing about this, let me, is it actually will do that as well as vibrate. So it, 
unfortunately, you can hear it. It's not the quietest vibe um, in the world, um, but it's a nice firm vibrator. Um, prostates and G-spots really like that firmness. So, um, you know, if you're going to go for something that's going to do G-spot or prostate, put a little firmness on it. The rabbit, the blue rabbit one with the carrot um, that you showed earlier actually has also yeah. got a great yeah, G-spot, a G-spot um, yeah. point. If you want to do prostate yeah. stimulation specifically, um, like you can get a prostate stim toy. Uh, this is from a company called Aneros. And this actually, you can see it kind of has that same curve that the G-spot stuff has. Pro tip about sex toys is, is there is very little difference in what you're looking for from a G-spot toy and what you're looking for from a prostate toy. So take a look at both departments um, because sometimes depending on where you, you know, like who the manufacturers are, the prostate stuff is actually a little bit more expensive than the G-spot stuff um, for essentially the same product. So, you know, like this is kind of like you could shop in, in one section or the other section and just look at like, what's the size of it? Um, what am I asking it to do? Um, a prostate massager, some of these have vibrations, some don't, but again, this is kind of like it's pushing up against the prostate, just like a G-spot toy would be pushing up against the G-spot. Um, so, so prostate and G-spot, both essentially the same. It, they behave the same way. I do an entire class trying to explain that. Um, but it is kind of like the, you know, you know, finding a, finding a toy that vibrates can, can kind of add to that experience. If you're, if you're new to G-spot play or prostate play. Um, I do yes. have for internal ones. This is one of, um, <coughs> we vibes, uh, this is the Jive from we vibe and this is one of their remote control toys. So it's an internal vibe. Um, the chorus one has, um, this is like one step below the chorus. The chorus is a similar model, but this part actually would do um, clitoral stimulation. This one does not. So this is an internal stimulation you would put inside, but you can wear it. So it's uh, marketed that you can like wear this internally all day. You can give your uh, partner the remote control mm -hmm. to it through the WeVibe app. Um, so that's actually really fun, especially for now during um, isolation. That's a great way to play if you're long distance with somebody. Um, being able to give them that control can be, um, yeah. there's a lot of fun ways you can play with that. Um, that would be a fun, I know Sarah and I have talked about doing some more in-depth, like maybe blog pieces later on with like all the different ways you can, um, you know, enjoy and play with that, yeah. that different, uh, long, different, long. And if you're doing, if right you're now. doing like um, video sex or cam sex, one of the, uh, another workshop that we had not too long ago, uh, we had Jamie LeClaire talking about using toys for uh, sexting and dirty talk on cyber sex. They had some really great tips in there that um about like how to pick a toy yeah. how to how to get yourself set up for it but like you know think about the visual of like if you're playing for a partner um you know is your partner going to like to have the control and watch your reactions is your partner going to enjoy seeing something that's brightly colored you know it's like we you know like we can make solo sex a partner um play if we want to mm -hmm. um what other toy types did we not hit yet see um yeah plugs. we haven't talked about plugs yet um um so i i yeah. know you have some silicone ones um so let's talk materials yes. real fast um, before we show have, those um so yes caring for your sex toys is um is like step two um step one is finding a great sex toy the other one is like knowing how to take care of it um for uh, sex toy materials, we generally break them down into two kinds of categories, porous and non-porous. Um, so a porous toy is going to be something where the material itself has some small pores that can uh, retain bacteria. And so when we are thinking about how we want to use those, um, those would be toys that are going to be like one person only. Um, or they're going to be like one couple only, and you're going to need to clean them really scrupulously between. Um, they're not great for shared toys. So like if you want to get a toy that can be used internally on yourself and your partner, they may not be the best choice. Um, they also can have some plasticizers or chemicals that soften it that can cause reactions. The cool thing is that most companies have moved away from 
those kinds of toys. There are still some companies out there that make them. Um, but we want to make sure that like what you put in your body is as safe and as healthy as what you put on your body and what you, what you eat. Um, you know, like your body is going to react to everything it comes in contact with. And it would suck to have a sex toy that made you not want to have sex anymore because of a reaction. Um, that's kind of the opposite. Um, when we're talking about porous or non-porous materials, these are the ones that are going to be the easiest to take care of and the safest for your body because they're not going to give anywhere for germs and bacteria an opportunity to hide. And um, Miley's going to show, we've already talked about, and I think most of what we've shown now has, is silicone. Um, and so Miley's got a couple of toys. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about silicone is um, that it does, it, it has some flexibility and it has some give to it depending on um, what's underneath it, whether it's solid silicone or not. Um, but you can 100% sanitize them. Um, they can be washed with soap and water. You can actually boil um, sex toys uh, that are made of silicone that don't have motors to fully sanitize them. Yeah. So if you're playing with multiple people, they're a great choice for, um, for you to have a sex toy that's going to be healthy and safe for everybody. Yeah, actually, Sarah, do you ever uh, dishwasher your toys? I don't. I yeah. personally have not, but I do know people who do um, throw their their toys in the dishwasher. Yeah, uh, the like pots a, and pans cycle and cycle. no detergent because your sex toy does not need cascade; um, it just needs the heat. Um, I honestly, um, I also have a UV toy cleaner that I really like. You like you you clean it with soap and water and and get any residue of like lube or whatever off of it, and then I throw it in the UV. Um, sanitizer and like mine will fit an entire Hitachi um, so like that gives you um, it's awesome. called the I think it's the UVEE -E, Hannah um, they make a couple of different sizes but like you can actually also sanitize your keys and your phone in it so because um, it just you um, I, I teach at a place called Chicago Dungeon Rentals here in town, and they use UV sanitizers for um, for toys that folks might use. And I didn't even think about it until um, the uh, the dungeon assistant actually posted that, like, she threw her keys and her phone in it after after she had to run out because she wanted to make sure everything was super clean. That is it. That that's the one, Hannah. You got it. Okay. Um, so um, Actually, in addition to silicone, we've got metal and glass that are also non-porous, but let's talk silicone. Yeah, so I have a couple silicone plugs that I'll show you. These um, these are textured plugs, and they vibrate as well. So um, plugs come in a lot of different shapes, sizes, uh, functions. These happen to be vibrating ones. So these are from B Vibe. Um, this is a line that was made by uh, mm -hmm. sex educator Zoe Ligon who goes by uh, Thongria. Um, so she made three different ones, so they're all different textures. Um, so this one, I believe, is called the swirl. This is called the twist, and this is called the bump. Um, and they all they all vibrate, so you can plug them in. Um, and like Sarah said, depending on these, um, despite being uh, vibrating mm -hmm. and have motors inside, they're submergible, so you can wash these. You can put them in a sink with um, your toy cleaner or soap. Um, but they're soft silicone. Um, they do have a little bit of give to them. Um, yeah, they're fun colors. These, I do love that mm -hmm. they have different vibra vibration patterns. So as you play with them, um, you can play with the different um, strengths and vibration patterns. Um, and I do love, one thing I love about um, Zoe's website, Spectrum Boutique, is if you aren't sure about what type of lube, because like Sarah said, the type of lube you use is really important on your toys, because a lot of these toys, you know, they're not, they're, they're not cheap. They're, they're good quality toys and you want to take good care of them and make sure that you're using the right lubes. Um, and that's one thing that Spectrum Boutique always puts in their product description exactly whether you want to use um, water-based mm -hmm. or whether it's okay to use um, the silicone lubes. So that's always helpful if you're not sure. Yeah, um, yeah I, um, I usually tell people like if you can remember that silicone and silicone don't go together. So no silicone lube with silicone toys and no oil-based lube with any like stretchy or PVC toy so like the um but otherwise everything is fine and if you want to just get one lube that you can use for absolutely everything a water-based lube is going to be perfect because they're they're not going to do anything like degrade the toy they're not going to like bond chemically with it like the silicone does um so yeah if you're if you're like i need one lube so that i don't have to think about it a good quality water-based lube is your friend um and i remind people like even if you don't normally use a lube when you're talking about a toy 
you might want to think about using a loop because the way that a toy feels is not the same way that like a body part like fingers or mouths or penises would feel. Um, and so adding that little buffer of, of cushion between your body and the toy actually can make for a longer um, session. Um, I'm a big Sliquid fan too, Hannah, um, because I have like one of those systems that reacts yeah, poorly to too. everything. Um, another lube company, I like um, Uber Lube Silicone is amazing. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a company mm -hmm. that makes a lube called Sutil, S-U-T-I-L, that is the bomb. Like I literally got turned on to them when I was teaching at self-serve toys last in Albuquerque last year. And they were like, oh, you know, like you should try this. And I was just like, you ain't gonna go buy a whole big tube of it and take it home because it was just that amazing. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a lube that you love, um, you can actually get like little trial packets from a lot of companies. Um, uh, for the question about the pH levels, no, actually Sliquid is pH balanced, so it's the same pH as, um, as like the healthy vaginal pH level. I have never had an issue with, with Sliquid and I react to everything. Um, but Sliquid and then silicone, because it's, it's inert and it's not going to be absorbed by your body, it's not going to mess with your pH level. But Sliquid would definitely be hands down, like if you're concerned with pH levels, that's where I would go. And I feel like we should say none of these companies are, te are paying us. <laughs> yeah, right. We're, we're, just, not, we're just we're doing not our own virtual <laughs> But if they'd like us to. So uh, no, you're get at I'm sorry. <laughs> One other thing I wanted to say about the vibrating plugs is um, I do like that because of the versatility. Um, I often use these. I actually mm -hmm. use these more as um, just vibrators yeah. during play um, and less for anal play. Um, so these are all meant to be anal plugs, but truly I use them, um, you know, if I'm playing with like a dildo or something, mm -hmm. I'll often grab one of these cause they're just a good size and they're easy to grab and from, you know, by the bed and, yeah. and use them for, um, vibrations on your clit. So, um, I do like that as, as being a little bit more versatile. Than yeah. Just a, I think, uh, I mean, it's like, if you're going to have plug something plug. that vibrates, why not get as much use of it? out of it as possible and something like a silicone there's no like if you if you have used it as mm -hmm. an anal plug like last week is as long as you've cleaned it like you can use it vaginally this week or with another partner next week yep. and not worry about like it creating any exactly. any yep. issues i'm gonna have to check out wicked Sensuals because that's like two people that have now said it uh, <laughs> um so um in addition to silicone the other um the other big non or yeah the other big non-porous materials are metal and glass. And I know that they can feel a little terrifying for people. So I wanted to pull some, like, and I'll be honest with you, metal and glass are amazing. Um, they, um, they, they hold temperature really well. So if you like a little bit of temperature play, um, you can um, put the toy in like warm water or cold water. I like to actually put it in like my jeans pocket if I'm, if I'm fooling around with somebody and it's going to get a little hot and heavy so that it warms up to my body temperature before I use it. Um, but um, I, I brought out a glass plug. This is from a company called Crystal Delights. Um, they do amazing plugs and they do all sorts of wands. Um, I actually really like it because they do decorative stuff. This is actually, uh, they did a limited edition. This is a Labradorite stone um, that's in it that I just kind of went bonkers for and ended up getting from them. Um, but uh, with glass toys in particular, um, make sure that the company that's making them is is using like a really strong tempered glass um, because if it's a tempered glass it means it's not going to shatter because of a temperature difference which which is a concern um, I've literally of all of the glass toys I've had I've only had one break and that was because I was trying to put it on a shelf in my bathroom and so it fell from like a six foot height onto a tile floor and it sheared clean off so like it, there wasn't a possibility that there was going to be like a chip or a crack in it um, that I wouldn't notice, which is really the, that's the concern. Um, but the other thing that's really nice about glass toys is that they don't require a lot of lube. Um, so if you're a person who just kind of forgets to re-lube things, glass and metal don't really require it as much. Um, with, with the anal toys that Miley was showing and with this one, you'll notice that there's a flared base on them. Um, 
please make a commitment today not to put anything in your butt unless it has a flared base on it um, because butts will suck in as we get aroused and literally will pull things in. And if it, if they didn't, there wouldn't be websites full of pictures of x-rays from ERs of things that people have gotten stuck in their butt. So make sure that um, before you put it in your butt, that there's something that's going to keep it from going all the way in. Um, in addition to this, I actually also grabbed uh, my Enjoy Pure Plug. Um, this line, this company is one of my all time favorites. Like my, um, the pure wand is actually my, uh, desert Island toy. Like if I was stuck on a desert Island with one sex toy, what would it be? It's going to be the one I'm going to show you next. Um, but again, yeah, the wand, that's my dream wand. toy right now. Yeah. Uh, I'll see what I can do for you. Maybe that, maybe, yeah, may, yeah. maybe you get a little coronavirus, um, <laughs> love package or something with, with a pure wand in it. Um, but the the metal actually is super warm, like it's super cool. It warms up really beautifully. It's so much easier to get a, a, a metal or glass toy in that might be a little larger than what you're used to. Um, and especially for any kind of play that involves movement, because there's zero friction on these toys, you're not as likely to have like fatigue, like your your um, your your vaginal lining or your rectal lining being fatigued or or getting abraded so you can wear them for a lot longer or you can use them for a lot longer without it becoming uncomfortable um the one that we were just talking about is this one uh this is the pure wand um i like to think that it brings a smile to everything um but this is literally um you know like if you want something to thrust you can thrust with it um you can arch it up against g-spots or prostates it's got a smaller end and a bigger end um and it, it's got enough weight in it um, that it kind of does a lot of the work for you. So like once it's in, um, it's really easy to just kind of like put a little bit of pressure and have it rock back and forth. Um, but again, we talked about prostates and G-spots need firm pressure. I kind of think about like, what would you want to massage? Would you want to massage with something that's kind of spongy and has a lot of give? Or would you want to massage with something that's fairly strong and sturdy? Um, and so, so this is... You know, this is, and, and you can get wands in lots of different shapes, um, but the this one is what it is. The other cool thing about it is that it gets that trigger point right on your back so good. <laughs> We used to we used to walk around the shop with that <laughs> and with the Hitachi on top Always of dual it. Purpose, and we had right? like stress in our backs, um, and of course have to put it away real quick before when customers came in because we didn't, you know. But it was totally the way that we did it. Well, you know, so many uses. You know, that's funny. Um, I, I worked in a children's hospital, yeah. and for babies with lung issues, vibrators are often used to help, um, like, with, um, you know, give some vibration on the lungs. I used, so, I so used my, uses um, for these my things, magic you know? wand um, <laughs> on low on my forehead when I've got a sinus headache. It, it's amazing. Um, so the other thing is, like, this is kind of the other yeah. classic um, – this is this is the the old school. This is the new yeah. version of the old school Hitachi magic wand. Um, it is no longer called a Hitachi. Um, this one is actually rechargeable and it runs for three hours on a charge, which you know it had me at hello essentially. Um, the other cool thing that they've done is like, and I think most every company now does some sort of a wand vibrator. They come from really petite palm size up to like, you know, like this big. Yeah. Um, this is not exactly intuitive as a partner toy, um, but it can be used as a partner toy kind of going between bodies. And especially if you're doing like rear entry or doggy style, um, like it can kind of go underneath the person who's the receiving partner real easily. Um, the other thing this is great for is adding vibration. So like that gorgeous thick skin toy that, that you have, Miley, like, applying this to the end of it is going to make that toy vibrate. Um, so this is like a, a great combo toy. Um, and actually I really love that they did this one. And a lot of companies are doing this with their wands now is they're putting silicone on them. They used to be usually like vinyl, which is, is a porous material. And it also kind of over time, it looks kind of gross after a while. Cause you know, um, but like a lot of the companies now yeah. have them with, uh, with silicone. Um, so they're really, really, versatile and really useful yeah 
and there's so many attachments oh, yeah. for the Hitachi that there's like so many different ways you can play with it. There's like internal attachments that you can attach the top to it. There's yeah, there's um I've seen actually there is um there is a Gillette attachment now too. So that's mm-hmm. actually I uh I don't actually have a, a Hitachi wand, but um that is yeah. something they offer an attachment so that you can turn that into an uh, um attach that right onto your wand so yeah yeah lots um of l was actually to, showing to us one from levi them, yeah. that actually comes with attachments that are really fun for folks with penises and for folks with vulvas so um before we walk away from the butt um i do want to show one more um and that's anal beads um so like um i don't know how many of y'all have been in like the dirty old man store because that's what we used to call them when i was when i was um younger because there'd be that like one skeezy store in town that was kind of like you know you didn't really you always drove past there and you're like um and and like you would see these like beads on a string (laughs) literally on a string like a nylon cord um and um thankfully we have we have graduated (laughs) like we we know better now (laughs) um but you can get anal beads um these are silicone ones uh super easy they just ease right in they're great for anal newbies because you can like you can have a lot of success just putting the first little bead in um, and you can like, if you're, if you want to relax in, you can make this a solo thing where you work to different sizes. If you want to take a larger toy, or if you want to be able to have a partner penetrate you. Um, the one thing that I would tell people is that there's, there's like this idea that's out there that you should pull them all out of your partner's butt when they have an orgasm. This is, this is really not the time to like show off your, um, lawnmower starting skills with pulling it out. Don't do that. Like, like that is the best way to make sure you'll never get a date with that person ever again. Um, but teasing in and out can actually, um, it makes the anal sphincter kind of like relax and open up. And so the bloop kind of feeling can be really, really pleasurable for the recipient. Um, and because it all kind of like folds up once it's inside of the body, um, you can get a feeling of fullness without necessarily having to go for a big toy. Um, so it's a great kind of, kind of teasing way of doing some anal um so uh i'm sorry y'all are all talking about i'm getting distracted i can't i can't can't look at the chat don't look at the chat yeah i'm just like reading the chat Um, and just getting very distracted so i think the the last kind that i had um, was uh just to mention Um, actually I want to show one more and that's, uh, Kegel exercise balls. Um, these got real popular again when the, uh, 50 shades of gray book came out. Um, there used to be like two little tiny metal balls that you would get in a little box and you would put them in. Um, these are a lot more fun and actually have the side benefit of being great pelvic floor muscle exercisers. So, um, these go in and many of them have like a little rattle inside of them. Um, they're a lot of fun to like put in while you're doing other fun stuff, um, including going to the grocery store or, you know, like taking your, taking your neighborhood social distance walks so that you can get some exercise. Um, again, silicone, metal, glass, they make these in bunches of different materials, but, um, this can be a little something extra that you can use. It's very discreet. Um, but also like you can say like, oh, it's for my health. That's why I have to use this. Um. So that was the last one that I have. What did we miss on your side, Miley? So I think I just have maybe one or two other toys I have to show. I want to show these because yesterday <laughs> Sarah told me she was like, it, that's, that's the I ET this, toy. The that's the look, ET so that means I have to show them for some reason. <laughs> So um, these, I feel, are a very underrated toy. Um, I am somebody who enjoys G-spot stimulation. So um, these are called the Wet for Her 2, as in two fingers. It just looks like two fingers, and it is a finger extender. So they go on. These are for partnered play. Um, I think it would be very difficult to use on yourself, so these would be specifically to use with a partner. But um, it makes it so that you can really stimulate your partner's G-spot. Um, which is your fingers. Um, so Sarah hates the way these look, but I can tell you they are very effective, and I think they're. And that's also underrated. like um, and what for her too, is so, a um, lesbian a, woman-owned, woman-focused toy company. So, um, like, if you want to support uh, queer small business, that's a yeah. great way to do it. 
is to to pick up toys. Um, and in fact, a lot of the toys we've shown you today are like, yeah. you know, some of the toys that Miley has there. Are, these are small businesses that aren't going to be sold sold through, you know, Amazon or through main outlets. So you really get a chance to kind of like dig into that. Um, right. Uh, yeah. Thank you for for giving me the warning so that I could not be drinking my tea while you pull that up. And I would, you know, um, <laughs> I I appreciate. I was that. like, oh, Sarah doesn't um, like that. Was there something else that you wanted to show? <laughs> And then I was just going to remind you guys that to have fun with it, there are so many different fun toys out there. This is one I just picked up because it's just like, how could you not love that? It's just so cute. And it's, it's very <gasps> unique. Just I thought this was a different. Um, oh, that looks yummy. Like functionality. It's very soft. That would be great. For yeah. And everybody's you can change the direction body. of the spinning. Like, so, you I, can, know. I can imagine like. Um, yeah. Have fun with it. Yeah. Right. So this is great for clit stimulation. It's great for penis stimulation. Um, Adam and I have definitely had I fun think with e this, um, playing with it so far. Super soft. Yeah, um, yeah. It makes kind of an obnoxious noise. Can you hear it? Like, it's kind of a, no a noise, but it's fun. It's cute. So yeah, have fun with it. Yeah. There's so many great toys out there. Um, and they're like so innovative and fun. You know, it's not just like these old, like yeah. I think so many people yeah. are used to like the old, just like flesh colored, like dildos yeah. that, you know, are not very appealing and are a bit intimidating, but yeah, have fun with it. There's so much great yeah. stuff out there that is really creative. There's fantasy products out there. If that's your thing, um, there's smaller, more discreet stuff. This is a Dame Eva that if like some of these bigger ones are a little too much for you, there's little tiny, um, more discreet stuff out there so really just find um we'll obviously share some of the websites but really look around and see what appeals mm -hmm. to you because um if you're somebody who hasn't really played with toys before there's so yeah. much out there and it can be intimidating kind of dipping your toes into figuring out what um you know if if somebody is is like really new to toys and really doesn't quite know what they're looking for um like my suggestion is to get something that's less expensive that you don't mind like like what is the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to use it three times and you're not going to want it like like pick out something that's that price range and then use that as a gateway to figure out like what do i really like um you know like i kind of mm -hmm. joke about those like you know the little the massagers right. that have like they they turn up or down and there's no on off switch um like you can get one of those for ten dollars and if that's what gives you a chance to like try a sex toy and go like yeah i'm not so much into the vibration or i want softer material or whatever like you can figure it out on a ten dollar toy and then use that to kind of like expand your palette um figure out what's going to feel really good for you it's like oh i wish that this did this i wish that it buzzed like this or that it had a deeper vibration you know you even though we're not really able to go to shops and like try things out in our hands right now it doesn't mean we can't start exploring um, and if you already have a toy, like literally think about like, what do I wish this toy would do? Or what does this toy do? That's really obnoxious. Like, you know, I held up the Lilo one and it was like really loud. And I was just like, Oh, you know, like if I had, if I was sharing a house with a roommate, would I, would I be nervous using this? Would it keep me from actually enjoying myself? So think about what's going to be a good fit for you mm -hmm. and, and what your body likes. Like the reason that there are all these different sex toys is not because people want to just make a whole bunch of money. It's because everybody's body is a little bit different and what works for one person is not going to necessarily work for another. And what works for us Absolutely. one year in three or five years may not be our jam. That's totally okay. You know, as, as we explore more of ourselves and more of our bodies, we learn new things about ourselves. And then it's like, oh, I didn't realize that this was going to feel good. Let me go explore that a little bit. And mm -hmm. if you don't love them and you're somebody who, you know, has partners and stuff, maybe your partner will love them. And it's something that you can play with with your partner when you're having, you know, intimate time. So um, just because you don't love it doesn't mean that, you know, you won't use it uh, in other ways. So, mm -hmm. um yeah, don't be scared to try stuff. Like Sarah said, find stuff that's in a price point that works for you before you, yeah. um, you know, look at some of the more. And if you're stuff, looking but, for, yeah, this is where I'll do the pitch for some upcoming stuff. stuff. If you're looking for like, oh, I want to know more about toys. Um, we're going to have Ariel from Orgasmic, um, who is um, uh, an influencer and a sex maven on Instagram. Um, we're really excited. We're going to have Ariel on uh, next week. 
um, talking about her favorite sex toys and giving us some tips on how to use them and maybe some uh, delicious little stories as well. Um, and then towards the end of the month, actually, Miley and I will be back with the, the Miley and Sarah Road Show. <laughs> um, we're going to specifically be talking about toys for guys. So whether you're a cis guy, trans guy, no matter what your genitals are, we want we want guys to feel like there are, are toys for them that are going to make their bodies feel really great and not just about like what toy am I going to use on my partner. So we're going to take you through that, um, you know, those ideas then and hopefully give you a little bit of something to bone up on. Uh, bone up. Uh, I know. I know. Um, I think we might have time for one or two questions if anybody had um, anything that they wanted they wanted to see a toy closer, if they wanted to um, yeah. jump in and ask um, and, uh, um, we've got about I saw a question minutes. for the um, uh, to grab a the links to grab a for the toys. Uh, um, just to re reiterate, we will be putting up a blog post in the next few days that we're going to have links to a lot of the toys as well as some of the resources that we've shared so that you can all... Um, you know, pick through those and, and find what works. Um, I would also say, like, call your local adult shops and, and ask them, um, you know, like, what would they recommend? Tell them, tell them what it is that you're looking for because it's to their benefit to get you the right toy, you know, and they can kind of help guide you in that. That's what they do. They're sex educators. Um, so, yeah, any questions, please hop in and join us. Otherwise, we will just talk to ourselves. You know, <laughs> I'll show you one other one. Mm. This one, um, this is an Uberime. I hope that's how you say them. Um, they do more fantasy stuff. So this one, if you guys are um, Game of Thrones nerds, this is called the uh, the Night King, and it was. Uh, mm. I love Uberime. That's another small business. I think they're out of Florida, and it's a one man show. He makes. Um, all the all the stuff where did you find uh stuff. that manufacturer um, another small business that's great to support did you that toy so that toy is actually um this is one that our our hashtag open Ooh. team david and amanda brought back from um sex down south maybe so yeah some of these not all of these toys are mine i should give that uh disclaimer some of these um i did a social distance hang, uh handoff a couple weeks ago with david and amanda i traded them um some guava cake for uh, some sex toys. That some feels realistic. Here tonight. <laughs> um, so there is a question: Is there any coming Not back from accidentally mine, using silicone on a silicone lube on a silicone toy? So, um, yes, there can be. Um, I think that, so it's not going to actually like kill the toy. It's not like the toy is going to melt or anything, but what it will do is it will change the surface of the toy, um, to like the dual density silicone that that first toy that you were showing Miley, the Vixen, um, with the silicone, that's going to actually make it really gummy. Um, so, so like that, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, but if you've used it once or twice, mm -hmm. like, you know, wash it, um, with some Dawn dishwashing detergent, because that seems to cut through silicone lube pretty well. Um, I usually sit there literally with a Dawn, like in the kitchen with my, with my sponge, just scrubbing the crap out of the toy. Um, and I would just say like, you know, it is what it is at that point. Um, but if it hasn't been repeatedly used with the silicone lube, you might even not even notice. Um, some silicone toys say that they're okay to use for silicone lubes. If you want to try that, I would say patch test it. So like on this one, you could actually put a little bit, a little drop of lube here where it's not going to show and it's not like affecting the, the function of the toy. Leave it overnight, come back in and wipe it off. And if you see a difference in the texture, um, or if it like starts, if it looks like it's pitted or it's like super greasy after you wash it, that's an indicator that you don't want to use silicone with it. But, but yeah, you can absolutely keep using it. Um, like it, it's, it's not like, uh, oil on a latex toy is literally going to degrade it to a point where you're not going to want to even touch it. Um, but silicone and silicone just, it's not great for the toy. It's not hazardous. There's actually, um, also if you Google silicone lube on silicone no toys, some of the reviewers that we really like have actually dug into like what exactly happens and what kinds of silicone lube seem to be better options. Because people make a science out of this. I know there's some great toy reviewers out there that truly, if, if you're having a hard time picking which toy, like 
I've seen some really impressive spreadsheets where it like will go through mm-hmm. each toy feature and it'll be like strength of vibration and it will literally mm-hmm. like if you're a data person that's like I want to know yeah. all the data points yeah and I, and I think everything that out there you know you like thinking about sex reviews, reviewers truly. everybody has a little bit of a different thing um like there are some reviewers that I I love but what they like about toys is not necessarily what I like so like I'll I'll check out their stuff, but I, I know that there are a couple of review, reviewers out there who, who get toys in the same way that I get toys. And so I tend to go to their blog and see what they've really liked and what they're reviewing. When you find somebody who's making a lot of sense to you, like follow their recommendation. Yes, um, and uh, yeah, just a final reminder you. that if you want to connect with other really awesome people like Miley, um, you can uh, go ahead and sign up with hashtag open.com or at ha- hashtag open.com. Um, you can click to download the app and you can um, create a profile and look for people who are looking for exactly what you're into, whether that's conversation about hedgehogs or conversations about sex toys, or if you're looking for somebody to maybe do some partnering up with so that you can have your own um, like solo isolation COVID dating experience. Um, the app is a great place to connect with other people and we'd love to see you there.